So public health at its core is about social change. A lot of the great uh, advances that we've had in our society due to health have resulted from a combination of the development of science on a particular issue and then the advocacy to in fact create change. So one of the places that we've fallen off in public health is we really haven't paid as much attention to advocacy currently as we did way back in the, the origins of public health. Public health and social work, for example, uh, historically have a lot of similarities because they were really about social change, changing the conditions in which people live and work. And it was by changing those conditions that we started seeing increases in life expectancy. This isn't very uh, much of a distinction that needs to be made. Do you just focus on changing people's behavior or do you focus on those policies that limit the limit the range of behaviors they need to that, that limit the range of behaviors that people can uh, select from? And what public health at its best is about is creating the conditions in which people can be healthy. And that means affecting the policies that either restrict or limit the range of choices people have. Advocacy isn't about science. It's like political scientists think that politics is about science, and they know it isn't, but it's a useful way to think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, what we know, for example, one of the major findings in public health over the years is that social inequality leads to health inequality. So what does that tell us? We have a science that is reinforcing this idea the challenge, though, is then how do we develop advocacy programs to reduce social inequality as a way of dealing with this health inequality? There's no particular formula that we can apply to do that because that's the process of social change. So it takes lots of different perspectives. It takes lots of different professions. It takes a long time because we're talking about changing the conditions in which people live. So advocacy really is what we need to do when we don't really know what to do. In other words, there's a leap of faith. What we're trying to do is enact a vision of what the healthiest possible society would look like. We have an idea of what the health variables are there, but we don't really have a good sense of how we create the change so that that becomes a reality. So there, if there were a science to doing this, we would have already done it. The fact is, is we're learning it as we go along, and we're looking for good examples. And there are good examples, but these examples uh, don't provide that specificity of scientific certainty that allow us just to develop a template or a formula that others can use. Part of the training for scientists and researchers needs to focus on what do you do when you finish the research. Mm -hmm. So we spend collectively as a society billions of dollars of taxpayer money funding research. And this research has developed enormous insights into every aspect of our lives. Most of it, though, is completed and just sits on shelves. Mm -hmm. We have a fiscal responsibility, a moral responsibility, a social responsibility to take that knowledge that was created with collective funds and translate that into public benefit. Advocacy is what we need to do to make that translation. And we're here today learning about what are some of the ways that might happen, but we're a long way from knowing any specific formula by uh, any specific formula to create that. Uh, Senator Cardin said this morning, it's not about uh, fewer resources going into research. We need a lot more resources into research, but we also need more resources into advocacy. So the idea isn't um, taking sort of a narrow perspective and saying it's an either-or question here. We need to look at other areas of our society where we're spending lots of money with very little return. And what we need to do is, is rethink whether the way we budget as a nation is really helping us attain the goals we have as a society. And the, the answer is no. For example, I've been in public health for 40 years. This next generation will be less wealthy, less healthy, and less well-educated than the previous generation for the first time in American history. This reflects a very poor idea of how we spend money to create a healthy, stable society. So we need to look society-wide. It's just not a question of, in public health, do we need more money or less money for research versus advocacy? 
This needs to be a higher social priority overall, and it needs to be reflected in the budget. Uh, there are examples of um, advocates mm -hmm. who run and get elected to office at the state, local, and federal level. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a part of it. But we don't need those specific people. What we need are a greater dissemination of the values mm -hmm. that advocates have that represent a progressive vision of what American society could be. It really says that there is a promise of America that we have. And it's a promise of America rooted, in a sense, in the core of public health. And how can we use advocacy to realize that promise of America that we all believe in?